variable over dt for every variable that you have. So when we have h and we have theta, you're going to have a d theta dt. In fact, that's what we're counting on. That's what we're counting on because that's what we're solving for. And But you're also going to have a dh dt. So you need to be able to identify that, and that's what we were looking for. So that's why I have a dh dt right here. That's why I know I'm looking for a d theta dt. You're going to have one of those for every variable that you have because it's all implicit. It's, they're all functions of t. We're just going to feel okay with what we're talking about so far. All right, good. Now, hopefully you made it just past this. Just past this would be, okay, let's take the derivative of tangent theta with respect to t. Keep in mind, this is a chain rule every time because it's with respect to t. So the derivative of tangent is what? Sigma squared. Sigma squared what? Theta. Theta. Good. Theta. And then, is that it? Because you touched the theta with a derivative, you have to have d theta dt. So far, so good? All right. Uh, now, other side. What is 1 3 thousandths h when I take a derivative of that? The constant's there still. dh dt. Good. Why dh dt? Because it's in respect of time. Okay. So h is a function in terms of time. So you absolutely must have a dh dt. Hey, by a show of hands, how many people got that? Good. If you didn't get that, and that some of you didn't raise your hand, if you didn't get that, are you okay on getting secant square root theta d theta dt? You see where that comes from? You, every time you take a, a function of, of theta with respect to time, you've got to have a d theta dt. Are you okay on the 1 over 3,000? That h that's, that has an exponent of 1, bring down the 1, take 1 away from it, that becomes that h to the 0, that's 1. But you need a dh dt, that's a must. Are you okay with this so far? Well, now we're, we're pretty much almost done when you think about it. Which piece are we ultimately looking for? This is, this is not what we're looking for. We're actually not even looking for the theta, because that's the angle. We're looking for the change of the angle over time. We're looking for this piece. How fast is the angle changing over time? You follow me? At uh, when it's 4,000 feet. This is a constant, and that we have a relationship at 4,000 feet. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one's going to be easy. We already have that. This one might take a little bit more work. Let's talk about secant squared theta for a second. First thing I need you to understand is that secant squared theta really means sec not that. Means secant theta squared. Keep in mind this is all occurring at 4,000 feet. So let's go back over to our, our picture here and kind of fill in this, the blanks a little bit. This is 3,000. This H at a specific time will be how much are we looking at? 4,000. That's going to be 4,000 at the moment of time that we're looking at. You follow me on this? That's going to be 4,000. Someone who knows something about Pythagorean triples. Tell me if this is 3,000, 4,000. Very good. If it wasn't 3,000 or 4,000, you'd have to do Pythagorean theorem to figure out that distance. By the way, the reason why we're figuring out that distance is because we have to now find what secant theta is. Secant, what is secant? Uh, one over cosine. So if you found cosine here and just reciprocated, you would get secant. Are you with me on this? So let's go ahead, let's talk about what cosine is. What's cosine of my angle theta? What's cosine? Oh, come on, don't leave me hanging. What's cosine here? Good, specifically, what's cosine? 3,000 over 5,000. 3,000 over 5,000? Therefore, secant is 5,000 over 3,000. Does that make sense to you? 1 over cosine, right? So secant would be reciprocate the fraction, you're going to get instead of 3,000 over 5,000, secant theta will be 5,000 over 3,000. Or 5 over 3. Or 5 over 3. Don't forget that you're squaring it.
Are you okay with this so far, folks? Do you see where the 5,000 or 3,000 is coming from? Do you see where the squared is coming from? Now, I'm missing something. Let's do the DHDT right now as well. How much is the DHDT that we were talking about? Because when we're at 4,000 feet, we're saying, okay, now we're 4,000, give me the rate of change of height with respect to time, and that's what this is saying. What's the rate of change of height with respect to time? What, what do we mark that out as? Let's make this a little bit prettier. Can we do that? Let's make it pretty. What happens over here, 5,000 over 3,000? I love that. That's nice. So I'm going to get 5 thirds squared. Over here, we're going to get Did you notice something here as well? Look, look at the board here real quick. Did you notice how I didn't really divide by secant <coughs> squared? I, I just plugged the numbers in. That's okay to do. You can plug in the numbers whenever you want to. You're just going to have one variable remaining, right? Your d whatever dt. You're just solving for that. It doesn't matter when you do it. You could have divided both sides by secant squared theta. It would have worked out just fine. You're just going to get a complex fraction there. I wanted to save ourselves some trouble and just do it on the left-hand side. All right, are you still okay with this? All right. Let's go ahead and square it. What are you going to get squared? times d theta dt, which is what I'm looking for, equals one-fifth. Let's get rid of 25 over 9. You do what? Say what? Okay, very good. So if I multiply by 9 25ths on both sides, I'm going to get one, the 9 over 125. And keep in mind, all this happened when the height was 4,000. That's how we came up with our secant. That's how we came up with this thing as well. So it was dependent on that height. Are you following me on that? The 600 feet per second only worked for a height of 4,000. The secant theta only works for a height of 4,000. That's the specific distance we were at, specific height. So that was when the height was 4,000. I know that's small up there. I don't want to write it too big to take over the problem well. Right, so you can see it, 4,000. What now? Can you tell me what we just found? Uh, rate of change. Slope, sure. But in this context, it's a rate of change. A, a derivative is a rate of change. So this derivative says the rate of change of the angle with respect to time how fast the angle must change in that moment of time, in this specific moment of time, to keep up with the rocket. Are you following that? So how fast the angle must grow in order to keep up with the rocket at that moment. Before that, maybe quicker. After that, maybe slower. But in that moment, that's how fast it needs to be climbing in that instant of time. Richard, have you understand the idea? Okay, now let's make this a little bit, a little bit more easy to understand. Do that division, how much do you get? Don't all talk at once here. 0.72 or something like that. 0.072. This right here, which you just gave me, is going to be in radians per second. Radians per second. Could you please translate that into degrees? So, because we typically, if I say zero. 0.72 radians per second. You really can't grasp that, can you? Yeah, well, uh, it's hard for us because we don't really deal with radians all that much. Translate that into degrees for me. That means you'll multiply by 180 and you'll divide by pi. Multiply by 180, divide by pi, you get 4.125. 4.13? Yeah. Zero point seven two radians is four point one three degrees per second. Is that more understandable? Four degrees? 
So at this moment of time, so the rocket takes off, right? Climbing 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, gets to 4,000 feet. That camera better be keeping up with it at a, at a growing, increasing rate of 4.13 degrees per second. So it's got to climb 4 degrees in that one second. At that moment of time, now it's not giving you a passable second, but at that moment, it's climbing at a rate of 4.13 degrees per second. Do you guys understand the idea? Is the math all that hard? Not really. This is probably the hardest part right there. And that's what's going to be hard for you is coming up with a formula. Figuring out how to relate these pieces together. <clears throat> After that, look what you're doing. You're just taking implicit derivative. You're just driving it, making sure you have a d variable over dt for every variable you have. The, everything else will be given to you. If not, you can find it with your relationship. And then plug the numbers in, and it'll work itself out. Um, any questions on what we've talked about so far? Do you understand what we've talked about so far? I've been doing all the talking today. So mm -hmm. any questions before we continue? Sweet deal. The next thing we get to talk about is chapter 3. We're going to skip section 2.9 for right now. We might come back to it. It's called differentials and linear approximation uh, at the end of our, our class. I hope it will be.